If you remember, at the very beginning of this video, I told you to watch it all the way through from the beginning to the end. And there's a really good reason for that, but let me get into that just a little bit later. Right now, what I want to do is recap where we are with the neck that we've been working on. Yesterday, I applied the peg head overlay, and then today, after the glue dried, I put on my template with double stick tape and roughed out the shape with a bandsaw before using the router table to finalize the shape. All that we have left to do on this neck is to show you how to cut that taper that I was telling you about on the back of the barrel and then we'll cut the tenon. If your neck up at the peg head has a different design, which in this case is a peg head that's a lot wider than the three inch stock, that's going to require that you install ears to accommodate the extra width. Well, once you install ears up here, you won't have a square neck anymore and it will be impossible to cut the tenon later. So, on this type of neck with that wider peg head design, we'll install the peg head overlay and the veneer on the back at the very end after everything's done. Right now, what I want to do is I want to show you how I set up to cut that taper on the back of this neck, which will make the final carving go a lot quicker and a lot easier. There's one last thing I need to do to the neck to prepare it before we do the tapering. And I need to rough cut out the shape of the heel right here. Now to do that, I just use one of my templates and this is oversized. So I'll just make a pencil line there, go over to the bandsaw and cut that out. Before I bandsaw that rather tight curve right there, notice that I've made some relief cuts. We're going to cut this taper on the back of the neck using one of these, which is a drill press planer. I'm going to show you that in a little bit, but for right now what we need to do is we need to make a jig to hold the neck and we also have to figure out what that taper is on the neck. The way I figure out the taper is I measure the width of the neck at the first fret, not the width of the neck and the fingerboard, just the width of the neck. And this is at the first fret. I'll then transfer that measurement to the neck. Then at the tenth fret, I'll make another measurement and I've marked the tenth fret here. I'll make a mark on the neck there. Taking the tenth fret measurement, bring it back down to the first and make a mark right here on the plans. Then measure that distance, which is three sixteenths. That three sixteenths it's the width of a shim that you're going to put on this holder. And this holder will hold the neck securely so that it doesn't rattle around when you use the drill press planer. 
the 3 16 inch shim will go right at the nuck. Let me show you in a little bit more detail. This is my first fret mark that I made earlier and my 10th fret mark. The 3 16 inch shim is going here, right under where the nut is. And that raises it up so that I can then cut this taper with the drill press from here to here. It goes really easy. Let me show you. The tool that we're going to be using to cut the taper that's on the back of the neck is called a drill press planer. The original version of this was made by a company called Wagner under the name Safety Planer. Wagner no longer makes the product. However, Stuart McDonald has come out with their version and they call it a safety planer. There also may be a couple other companies that make it under the name Drill Press Planer. Whichever version you use, they're not terribly expensive tools, usually under about 40 bucks. But it's a really fast and efficient way to hog off a great deal of stock on the back of the neck before you do the final carving. Let me show you how we use it. I'm going to start my first cuts in the middle of the neck. I'll bottom out the planer, lock the quill, and then I'll start moving it back and forth. Now, the reason I begin in the middle is that if I didn't, I'd be removing too much stock by the time I got down here at the nut end and it might want to jump or move around on me. Just move it back and forth and take off a little bit at a time. Make sure that you hold the neck at the tenon end and at the peg head end firmly as you cut. Take off smaller amounts as you get down near the nut end and you're removing more stock. Stop cutting right before you come up to where you're going to carve the volute so that you have enough meat to do that transition. I'll readjust down at the heel. And once again, stop short of where you're going to start the transition up to the heel.
When doing the final cuts with the drill press planer, cut just shy of the mark that you made. That way, you have a little bit of room left to do the final carving by hand. Also, when sneaking up on the final cuts, make sure that the shim is under the nut end. Doing the pre-tapering of the neck with the drill press planer makes the final carving of the neck go a lot quicker and a lot easier.